We're getting to the point where the creation of Harry Potter, which has generated £20 billion pounds worth of box office receipts, merchandise and book sales, and which managed to get a generation of young people reading, it's just possible that all of that isn't even J.K. Rowling's biggest achievement. This is a remarkable woman who struggled as a single mother, suffered domestic abuse, and whose book idea for a little wizard with a scar on his forehead was rejected by no less than 12 publishers. She writes the first manuscript, Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone, on a tiny table at the Elephant House Cafe in Edinburgh on a basic notebook, which is now a priceless document and destined for a museum. Her fantasy world of spells and sorcery was in stark contrast to her real life privations. In the writing of those books, she created a magical escape for herself and her billions of readers. Like Dickens, Shakespeare and Austen, she will be read forever. It doesn't stop at the books and movies. There's a theme park, tea towels, T-shirts, pens, pencils, rubbers. There are Harry Potter action figures, board games, and inevitably there is Harry Potter Lego. Of course there is. J.K. Rowling was an ordinary woman with an extraordinary talent, which like a magic carpet has lifted her into the creative and financial stratosphere. And yet, and yet, and yet. Like the fearless and hilarious comedians Ricky Gervais and Dave Chappelle in the United States, what's most admirable about this woman is that she's used her wealth and her platform to call out the madness of extreme transgender ideology. This week, the shocking Cass review confirmed what many of us have been saying for a long time and were called bigots for even mentioning that the transitioning of children is deeply harmful for their bodies and their mental health, it is wrong. Whilst Rowling has always been the first to argue that a grown adult should be able to identify by ever which gender they seek to have and they should receive respect, dignity, love and support, I completely agree. But none of that should come at the expense of women's hard-won sex-based rights. Female-only changing rooms, female-only toilets, women's sports, hospital wards, where there is no place for a biological man. Not long ago, Isla Bryson, real name Adam Graham, a vile double rapist, was accommodated in a female prison. I rest my case. Rowling has been criticised for her so-called views, her opinions on gender. These aren't views. They're not opinions. These are facts. There are two sexes, male and female, the end. Rowling gets described as gender critical. Well, let me correct you there. She is gender factual, which is why the vile death and rape threats on Rowling, our greatest living author, are so appalling. But as a woman who has suffered domestic abuse in her own life, this literary hero is in no mood to put up with abuse from angry men in dresses, and she gives as good as she gets. She slays them like dragons every day on social media. This feminist icon has pushed back on what at times feels like a men's rights movement, with blokes all over again bullying, scaring, controlling and dominating women. Misogyny, sexism, the story of history, this time dressed up in lipstick and high heels. But I'm most offended by the pathetic child actors in the Harry Potter films, who wasted no time in throwing a woman who gave them their careers, fame and riches under the bus. Harry Potter leading actor Daniel Radcliffe, who is no intellectual wizard, let me tell you, apologised to any Harry Potter fans who felt that their experience of the books has been tarnished or diminished by Rowling's stance. I'd like to do a spell and turn him into a cat. What a pussy. Workmanlike actor turned property tycoon, thanks to the bountiful millions accrued from Rowling's work, Rupert Grint reiterated the nonsensical mantra that trans women are women and trans men are men. A cult-like statement that even key figures in the Labour Party, such as Wes Streeting, are now quietly abandoning. 
And what about Hermione Granger herself, actress Emma Watson, who dismissed Rowling's brave and honest stance by saying the following. She said, trans people are who they say they are and deserve to live their lives without being constantly questioned or told they aren't who they say they are. Well, who is Emma Watson, a budding thespian who won the showbiz lottery the day she was chosen by Rowling to play Hermione Granger? If it wasn't for J.K. Rowling, at best, she'd be a jobbing actor, pulling pints in the old Vic, maybe playing a dead body in Casualty, or more likely playing out a real life role, tossing burgers at her local McDonald's. She's had her chips. Following this week's CAS review, which highlighted the worst excesses of this new religion, it's clear that so-called trans ideology, which denies biological sex, is in retreat. But only thanks to heroes like Rowling, who history will judge not only as a great author, but as a great woman too. She has silenced her idiot critics with just one wave of her magic wand.